Hey friends, I'm Jimmy Gaddis. Welcome to Nostalgic. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the most valuable, rarest, most coveted 80s and 90s toys found at Time Warp Toys and Collectibles. It is my go-to for vintage toys, especially He-Man. Now to get to this shop, we need to hop a flight out of Alaska and head 4,500 miles east to Long Island, where I grew up. Shout out to West Isop High School, class of 97. It's a land with its own distinct accent. Just ask my niece, Brinley. Coffee? No, no. Coffee, coffee. Thanks, kiddo. Now that we've got that out of the way, Time Warp. Take us back to Time Warp. Toys and collectibles. <laughs> Family owned, Time Warp in Lake Grove is considered by many to be the top shop on Long Island when it comes to finding the toys that defined our childhoods. It's the kind of place you get lost in, reminiscing, daydreaming about simpler times, less responsibility, no bills, mortgage, divorces, lawyer fees. Sorry, sorry. Got a little bit off track. Anywho, my brother Luke and I asked the owner to show us some of their most coveted retro goodies. Then I did my due diligence to tell the story behind each one. Now remember, I'm not claiming to be a vintage toy expert. I'm learning as we go, taking you all along for the ride. We're learning together, we're, we're in this together. That said, sit back, relax, grab that cup of coffee, 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 and let's get to the list. Here are my top five finds at Time Warp Toys and Collectibles. Number five. Hanging out with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from the late 80s and early 90s is a rare shredder that required a healthy appetite to acquire. The story behind this hard to find figure starts in 1991. The year TMNT 2, The Secret of the Ooze arrived in theaters. <laughs> The movie gave us Vanilla Ice's ninja rap and our first glimpse at Super Shredder on the big screen, played by WWE Hall of Famer, Big Sexy Kevin Nash. It's a Super Shredder! Not long after The Secret of the Ooze debuted, Playmates released a Super Shredder figure. Purple suit, black mask, silver armor, just like in the movie, no surprise there, easy money, and for collectors, it's still relatively easy to find. A few years later though, an exclusive and limited variant could be had if you were hungry enough. I get to be Michelangelo. Radical, dude. But now it also has... The Shredder! Ah! To get it, mom or dad had to mail in labels from the TMNT Chef Boyardee Turtles vs. Shredder pasta cans. A 1993 edition of Turtles Magazine promoted the giveaway said you can get an exclusive limited edition Shredder action figure with 20 proofs of purchase from cans of Chef Boyardee pasta. The special edition Shredder will appear in your mailbox in just eight weeks. Cowabunga! The figure came in a plastic bag with some mutagen, mut with some mutagen, how do you say muti mutagen? And Shredder's spiked mace. As you likely noticed, this version was all black with the silver armor, sharp. They can fetch a pretty penny nowadays. Not sure just how many were claimed, but for collectors, this is a holy grail of Shredder figures, along with a variant that had purple armor and was only released in Europe. Number four. Tucked away behind the front counter for safekeeping, Stack Up is one of the original 17 NES games released in the US in 1985. A complete stack up like this one with all the pieces in the box, manual inserts, is one of the rarest NES treasures to find, typically going for thousands of dollars. Now it was taken out of Nintendo's lineup relatively quickly by all accounts, never seen a second run in stores. According to Racketboy.com, the value of a complete stack up rose 110% from July of 2021 to December of 2022. So yeah, demand is high, supply, hard to come by, especially with all the pieces. Adding to its value is its connection to a crucial piece of video game history. Will you be the one to witness the birth of the incredible Nintendo Entertainment System? The one to play with Rob, the extraordinary video robot, batteries not included. He helps you tackle even the toughest challenge. Stack Up is one of just two games playable with Rob the Robot. The video game accessory many credit with saving the video game industry in the US after the crash of 83. Now, as the story goes, in the fall of 85, Nintendo wanted to introduce the NES to North America, starting with a test run in New York City. Following the collapse of the home gaming industry, retailers were wary of another Atari-like disappointment. 
But Nintendo was persistent, even offered to buy back any inventory it didn't sell. So some stores took a chance. Nintendo set up elaborate displays to showcase and demo its deluxe set, complete with control deck, two controllers, Zapper, Duck Hunt, and Gyromite, which was played with Rob, your robotic operating buddy. By the end of 85, Nintendo surpassed its goal of selling 50,000 new units. They paid an independent research firm to find out what this success was attributed to. Was it the graphics, a specific game? Well, a poll of 200 people found that 26% of parents bought the NES because their kids asked for it. The biggest reason those kids wanted it was Rob. And while Rob is slow and loud and somewhat boring, if we're being honest, it was still a robot, and robots appealed to kids in the 80s. Hey, laser lips, your mama was a snowblower. Nationwide sales of the Nintendo Entertainment System started a few months later in 1986. The video game industry was back for good. As for this rare gem, like all of the 17 original NES games, Stack Up comes in that iconic black box with in-game sprites on the cover. FYI, this was another marketing strategy utilized by Nintendo to show off its 8-bit graphics. Stack Up came with five different colored blocks and five trays to put them on, along with two rubber hands or claws for Rob to grab those blocks with. You play as Professor Hector, and in short, Use your controller to move the professor around, creating commands that are sent to Rob in order to get Rob to stack the colored blocks according to the on-screen pattern. There were three game modes. Rob worked similar to the light gun in Duck Hunt, receiving its commands via these optical flashes on the screen. Special thanks to Zoclates and the Video Game Collector for allowing me to use their stack up video. I assume this rare piece of Nintendo history will not last long at Time Warp. Number three. Over in my favorite corner of the store is a figure which still remains somewhat of a mystery. Online forums discussing his possible origins run thousands of posts deep, dating back more than 20 years. It's a puzzle even the toys that made us wasn't able to solve on Netflix. Where the heck did this figure come from? Well, I don't know. This is Wonder Bread He-Man. According to Wiki Grayskull, he began to surface on eBay in the late 1990s. Not only is he the most powerful man in the universe, he's also one of the most expensive, especially when graded an 80 out of 100 by Collector Archive Services. Unlike the figure most of us had, this version has brown hair, brown loincloth, black belt, and black boots. No armor and no shield, axe, or power sword. Instead, it's commonly accepted that he came with these two weapons. So why is he called Wonder Bread He-Man? Well, initially, people thought he was given away as part of a promotion with Wonder Bread in 1986. Now, it turns out there was a Masters of the Universe promotion with my favorite white bread for PB&J, but it was actually for a series of He-Man trading cards featuring the legendary Masters of the Universe artwork of Errol McCarthy. So, although that theory was debunked, the Wonder Bread name stuck. Now, he's also referred to as Savage He-Man based on the theory he was a prototype for the Conan the Barbarian toy line, hence the manufacture date of 1981 on his back. Long story short, Mattel had the license to make Conan toys prior to the movie's release in 1982. But once they realized this wasn't made for kids, they asked to terminate the contract. The Masters of the Universe line would hit store shelves just a few months later. Now, the more accepted theory behind the origin of this figure is a buy three, get one free promotion that Mattel ran in 1983. The most recent and compelling piece of evidence is a letter to Mattel that was unearthed in 2020. Written in 1983, it's from some kid's mom who basically complains about a figure her kids received as part of a buy three, get one free promotion. I'm paraphrasing, but it says they were disappointed with this stripped down version of He-Man that wasn't painted the right color. A response from Mattel was found with it, thanking her for writing regarding, quote, our buy three, get one free offer. Got a link in the description to the video that first broke this story and potentially solved the case. His weapons may be another clue. In 1983, some special edition Manny faces were sold with additional maroon weapons, including a short sword and ax, the same ones that accompanied Wonder Bread He-Man. Yes, the lore behind this figure is absolutely nuts. I spent what felt like a lifetime, an eternity researching this 
and trying to boil it down for you. I hope this gives you some idea as to why this rare figure is so valuable to Masters of the Universe collectors. Number two. Harness the power. Dino Riders. Rare, but not extinct, this 1989 Dino Riders Brontosaurus with its full battle accessories and crew is nearly impossible to find. But they've got two here at Time Warp. The other is in the box, which is a rarity in itself. I admit, this was new to me, but was so impressive, it quickly rose to the top five. It's big, durable, heavy, a badass. An absolute monster of a toy. I want to see one on top of the G.I. Joe aircraft carrier, absolutely dominating everything that gets in its path. If you didn't have Dino Riders toys as a kid, you may recall the cartoon, which was mainly created to help sell this Tyco toy line. I've got a vague recollection of it. Mount up. Quickly. First airing in 1988, there were just 14 episodes. It pitted the good Valorians against the evil Rulons on prehistoric Earth after an accident sent them both back in time. With the help of some tech, the Valorians telepathically communicate with the dinosaurs. Dive, Don. Who willingly lend a helping hand. The Rulons, on the other hand, brainwash their dinos to control them unwillingly. I will destroy them! We get our first glimpse of what this toy could have been in the 12th episode of the series, Battle for the Brontosaurus. That's a Brontosaurus footprint! No! Really? The Valorians save the Bronto from the Rulons. Questar asks Turret to show him some design schemes for it. Let's call them up on the screen. We have several options for arming the Brontosaurus, sir. Hmm, good work. Uh-huh, very effective. Well done, Turret. According to Dino Riders World, these photos of the initial Brontosaurus toy prototype show the same design chosen in the cartoon episode. But somewhere along the way, plans must have changed. This would be the final product in 1989. While it strayed from the cartoon version a bit, I don't think it changes anything in terms of just how cool it is. Standing 34 inches long, 15 inches tall, the biggest and most expensive toy produced for the entire line was released as part of the second series, sold for $79.99. The gigantic new Brontosaurus, the fighting fortress. Now there is one thing Tycho left out that disappoints me. Many of the Dino Riders toys had a motorized walking action. It's believed Tycho skipped this feature on the Brontosaurus as a cost-saving measure. Thanks again to Dino Riders World for the assist on this one link in the description. Now, as far as I know, both Brontos are still perched high atop the Time Warp display case, keeping an eye on things. Before we get to number one, there are a handful of honorable mentions I want to show you. They were no Transformers, but Tonka's GoBots had their time to shine in the 80s. Time Warp's got the Command Center in box and a CAS graded 80 Psykill figure on card, the enemy robot leader. Figure one of the series released in 1983. Comic collectors and Star Wars fans, this is the first appearance of Boba Fett in comics. Published in 1980, Star Wars number 42 is part four of the Empire Strikes Back movie adaptation. This one's CGC graded 9.6. I don't collect comics, but as a rabid Star Wars fan, this is extremely tempting. Remember Tycho's trains? Well, turns out they made one for the A-Team. This was one of the more surprising finds for me. It comes with an oval track, train cars, A-Team force, and quote unquote, the enemy, which are basically little green army men, jeeps, tanks, and the iconic A-Team van and launcher for a quick getaway. I never had any Karate Kid figures, but I uh, definitely wish I had. And I would have played with them in Remco's Attack Alley and Training Center from 1986. This one's still in the box, although with so many pieces, we opted not to take it out. Here are some Google pics to whet your appetite. It's the ultimate action play set for all of your tri-action figures. Gamers, did you know the failed Atari Jaguar is currently considered the most valuable gaming console on the second-hand resale market? That's according to Bitcade in the UK, which analyzed data for more than 13,000 online listings. Time Warp's got one in spectacular condition. Released in 1993, a lack of quality games and overall inability to keep up with the competition led to just 150,000 units being sold before Atari went under in 1996. Now the next two could have easily made the top five list. 
This die-cast Lion Force Voltron is an absolute classic, made in 1984 as part of the original Matchbox line. Not to be confused with the plastic panache place lions I got for Christmas back in the day, which are now sadly long gone. And what could be the rarest find in the building is this She-Ra Bank, originally $3.99 back in 1986. While similar versions for He-Man and Skeletor are plentiful, you won't find a single active listing for a She-Ra Bank on the internet. Trust me, I looked everywhere. I can confidently say Time Warp is the only place I can find it. And speaking of rare finds in the Masters of the Universe universe, it's time to reveal our top find. Number one. This is one of those collectibles you didn't even know you wanted until you laid eyes on it. Maybe it's because I'm partial to He-Man, but this extremely rare 1983 store display had me the moment I laid eyes on it. It arrived as I was setting up my camera. It's like it was meant to come into my life if for no other reason than for the sake of this very video, because I don't have enough expendable cash to buy it. It's a little less than four feet tall, two feet wide, and about four inches deep. Yeah, He-Man's muscles literally pop off the display. Not sure why they shrunk his power sword, though. Do you see Eternia over his left shoulder? From what I could find, it looks like retailers could replace that with inserts featuring different figures. If anyone wants to go halvesies on it and share custody, uh, please let me know. I'd consider it. And that's all the info I could find on it. Trust me, I looked. It's super rare. There's nothing else, which makes it that much more valuable in my eyes. And overall, that was my top five finds at Time Warp Toys and Collectibles in Lake Grove, Long Island, New York. Address and phone number in the description. Head on over, say hello, tell them Jimmy and Luke Gaddis sent you. So what did you think of my list? Let me know in the comments. What would have been in your top five? What's your number one? And which one of those toys do you remember playing with the most? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content that's gonna make you feel nostalgic for the 80s and the 90s. Wanna check out more collectibles? Don't miss this video right here. I'm Jimmy Gattis, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Your brother eats flies, Krulos. The greatest battle in the history of the universe is about to begin. Tyrannosaurus Rex and Diplodocus with motorized walking action and Monoclonius, each with figures in battle gear. Dino Riders!